hi in this video i'm going to share with you how i prepared and also earned my microsoft certifications in 2020 i start for eight certification exam in the space of three months and few days so let us see that first i have my certifications here eating badges but i'm just going to filter based on most recent because i was writing them almost consecutively one after the other um, this is where I started from, Microsoft Certified Fundamental, Azure Fundamentals, and that was July 28th, almost August, just two days before August. Uh, let's go back and let's see others, and this is the last one that I wrote, and that is November 11th. So, that's three months and 13 days. I wrote eight certifications. I'm not going to touch the the MCT is an award. You don't have to write an exam to become a Microsoft certified trainer. But I have one, two, and I have six here, which is eight Microsoft badges in the space of three months and 13 or say 14 days. But how did I get to prepare for this in case you have planned to write any of the certifications exam this year? First is Microsoft Learn Resources. This is the most useful and most resourceful that I am um, in resources that I've used when preparing for Microsoft exam and I'm going to show you how I do that. Let me go to my profile here. From my profile you're going to see that, okay, from my profile you're going to see I have 100 badges, meaning I've taken 100 courses, yeah, say call it that way, 22 trophies, that's 22 learning parts. I have over 136,000 experience points, shows no. I often read. Then let's come to collections. That is how I best prepare. So any exam that I'm preparing for, I used to create a collection of learning parts. When you're just reading through the Microsoft Learn resources, they are not after, they are not following each other. You don't even get to know. You might leave out some resources or some learning resources that are very important to the course you're about taking. But when you create a learning part, uh, it's in form of collections you'll be able to capture everything. you definitely know you are not losing or missing out any important learning resources. And how do you create that? As you can see, I'm still preparing for PL100. Uh, so I'm going to do that by going back to learn. Just locate certifications. I see if you want to browse, browse certifications. I also have it in plan to write Azure Administrator. That is AZ104. So I put Azure Administrator. Sorry. Azure Administrator, you can see AZ104, I'm going to click on it. And right now, you you know, right here, you just see the descriptions, what you need to learn, what the course will be all about, is there going to be an update to the curriculum and the rest. And then you see this, two ways to prepare, instructor-led, you have to pay, but online is free. Look at this learning path, one, two, three, four, five, Sometimes be careful so that you don't stop here. Show more. If you see any show more, show. Okay. There are six in numbers. And these are the learning parts that has information that will help you to better prepare for the exam. So don't miss out any of them. Unfortunately, a lot of people often consume only this one and think they are prepared. But you know, you are not yet. You can see all of them has if is at 104. So what you then have to do is come down to this button, plus button here, and click on it. It allows you to add it to a collection. I don't have a collection for Azure Administrator, so I'm going to create one. And I will call it AZ104 Azure Administrator. So I'm going to, yeah. So I have it here now. I'm going to click on Save. And I will do same for all of them. Just select my Azure Administrator collection and save. I'm going to do that for all, save, for all, save. All right, now that I've saved them now, it is easier for me to manage when I'm reading. Okay, I'm, I'm, go, I'm going back to my collections now. And you can see Azure is at one of us already there. And I'm going to click on it. See, all the learning parts are there for me to start it. When I'm done with this, I'll come to this. 
I know that I won't miss out any of those useful learning resources. So this is the number one. And it's, anytime I take this, I'm 80% confident I'm going to pass this. And because I often follow the practical sessions, the labs, and I will encourage you to do the same. The second thing resource that I used to use is this website, uh, examtopics.com. When you go to examtopics.com, it's you know they also have a prepaid version just to support them, but most of the sources here they are free. And I'm just going to locate the Microsoft exam I want to write. I'm looking for EZ104. This is EZ104. It's just a dumb site. It has resources that can help you understand how the question look like. Sometimes you can see some of the questions there, but of course, it's mainly to prepare you to how the question, the case use cases. Some of the time, the answers are not even correct. So I'm going to click on go to AZ104. And you see, there are four questions. One, two, three, four, four questions. Okay, five questions per page. And you have to move on to the next page. Meanwhile, this one has about 204 questions. You know, we're going to cover 41 pages. Take note, this is just a disclaimer here that don't go all in for their answers. Take for example now, maybe this question one, I think it is no, and they said yes. But look at it, you are seeing the discussions. People are debating whether the answer is either correct or not. And from there, you can also learn based on what you have done before. Don't just come here and prepare. Make sure you have taken the learning part. And then you can see what people are saying, you see the explanation, either to confirm your answers or to convince you that, okay, that answer is not correct. This the one they choose is the right answer otherwise okay and sometimes you might don't get bored because when you get after you're done with the five questions you move to next page often time you get this google capture asking you to prove that you're not a robot okay um i, I hate this thing you know i'm not sure okay boot. i think i have a boot and nope there's a boot oh i got it so then you move to the next page and don't forget that this is just a dump just to create that some of them mostly they are past questions and they might not be relevant again so but of course you can see some don't forget that this learning collections is the game make sure you follow through and often to ask people that have taken the exam before maybe other tips how do they prepare for it i don't i always make sure i write my own exam let's say 10 30 most of my exams are 10 30 and that way I get so calm and don't really die, I rest in the evening. You might choose the time that works for you based on your environment. And I wrote all my exams from home. Um, you know, there are a lot of risk there. It has to do with internet stability. I have a friend who, you know, couldn't finish before uh, and his network went off. I think Spectranet. Uh, luckily, that was DA100. Luckily, three days after that, three or five days after that time, they go back, he shared his own dashboard and realized that he passed. Even though he couldn't, you know, he terminate because he couldn't finish the exam. That was because he has passed already, you know. That's why you need to prepare very hard if you are going to write this exam from home so that you are not on 700 on dot. Because to pass Microsoft certification, you must have 700 out of 1000 points. Okay, so let me know in the comment section what exam, what Microsoft exam you are trying to write this year. I wish you all the best as you prepare for this. And of course, if there's any other tips you want me to talk about in my video, you can just put it in the comment section and I'm going to do a video about it. Thank you.